Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. It would seem that the charging speed of these new semi-trucks chargers is 1.5 megawatts. This is incredibly fast. It would take about three minutes to fully charge a Model 3 at that speed. Yet the semi-truck is the first vehicle in the world to be delivered with 4680 batteries. At the same time, this is also the first charging station we've ever seen designed solely around 4680 batteries. Admittedly, the semi-trucks really need to charge that fast due to their batteries being about half a megawatt hour themselves. And for a truck driver, time is literally money. Time waiting for it to charge is time not on the road. Okay, perhaps for the semi-truck, the degradation of the battery is not as important as the time for the driver to be waiting. And maybe Tesla have decided it's more important to charge quicker than get an extra million miles of life from the batteries. And maybe the batteries can be replaced. Also, I would like to think that it is obvious, or at least I hope, that Tesla's new 4680 batteries will have similar properties to LFP batteries, with the ability to charge to 100% and drive all the way down to 0% charge and not affect degradation. And with these new batteries, driving like that, you could still get 1 million miles then that is another massive advantage over all other long range EVs. Any nickel based battery currently, most of the time you can only use 60% of the battery due to driving between 20 and 80% charge to prevent degradation, which means you have to charge it that much more often. Of course, this is even worse for most legacy autos that only get around 250 miles of range anyway. When you take 60% of that, you're down to 150 miles. This is a huge advantage for 4680 batteries could have over every other nickel based EV battery. Every other EV that offers any decent range around 300 miles or so will have to be using nickel batteries. This means that they are not often able to charge from higher than 80% or run the battery below 20%. The more that is done, the faster it will degrade the battery. If you charge like this, the battery will likely last hundreds of thousands of miles without too much degradation, along without using superchargers too often, as the faster the charger, the more it will degrade the battery also. But perhaps Tesla's 4680 batteries have gotten around this also, i.e. a lot faster charging for the 4680 batteries like we're seeing with the semi-truck, even if it was half that speed, or maybe even only around 500 kilowatts, it would mean you could likely stop for a half charge in just a few minutes. I think it is abundantly clear that the 4680 batteries can handle some very fast charging. At the time of this video, we've barely seen this product in use, perhaps just with the semi-trucks and potentially some prototype cyber-trucks, but nothing of like its true capability, nor what kind of specification improvements we could likely see added to the new Model Y from these new factories. I think Tesla are likely to raise the prices of their 4680 series of cars, the more I think about it. This car would just be that much better and such a leapfrog in technology for a car especially impressive when the Tesla is already several leapfrogs ahead of the nearest competition. This new Tesla will be lighter, handle better, be quicker, stop faster, safer, have longer range, have more available use of the battery through full to empty charge and faster charging. Perhaps it will be called the Long Range Plus. Or maybe there will simply be an optional extra for 4680 series. How much extra would people pay for this? What is already possibly the most coveted car on the market, save perhaps the Cybertruck of course. Yes, that's going to be a really big money maker eventually too. All right, so all those extra features I've mentioned that the Model Y 4680 will have over the 2170, well, how much extra would consumers pay for that? What if they charge an additional $10,000? Is that not unreasonable? Will enough consumers understand? This is a huge product improvement. I would definitely spend the additional $10,000 for the upgrade, but I'm also not your typical consumer. I think Tesla would at least increase the price by $5,000 and then mention the additional features of the 4680 version, perhaps 30 miles extra range, faster charging times, quicker zero to 60 time. What if the zero to 60 time went down from three and a half seconds to 3.1 seconds? The Model Y performance currently has a similar zero to 60 time as a $200,000 Ferrari California, this would take the Model Y 0 to 60 time of closer to a Ferrari 488, which cost a further $130,000 than the California, except it's a family SUV, and I'm suggesting just an additional $5,000 for that improvement in performance, unlike the Ferrari. Surely it would be remiss to not charge more for your improved product, especially with such a giant leap in technology. This is Tesla's first EV battery, built from the ground up 
with first principles thinking, designed for the specific cars themselves too. A structural battery pack attached to the front and rear diecast moulds, this is one solid light car. We will soon get the specifications of how much weight this has reduced, what size battery they may be using, the range, the performance, then reviews. And then hear about all these extra features the 4680 batteries offer, like 100% to 0% charging and improved charging speeds. That thus makes it a more valuable product. But Tesla also need to sell 2170 Teslas, as they are also in demand, be it at a lower price point. What if Tesla even changed the Model Y line in Fremont over to Model 3 perhaps? And 2170 was only for Model 3, but most likely Tesla will continue to sell a 2170 Model Y as they are more profitable than a 3. Perhaps the price may go down slightly and it's simply a lower cost version of the Model Y hitting another price point where the Texas and Berlin Model Ys can offer an even higher price point. But it is a lot more of a car and offering more value. Plus, there is still the option of the old price point with the 2170 batteries anyway, so consumers shouldn't be too upset. Although a lot of people have already locked in their order for the Model Y and locked in a price. I would say the most likely thing might be, or at least what I would probably do if I was Tesla, would be to email all of the customers and offer them the upgrade to the 4680 version. Otherwise, there may be too many dissatisfied customers if some of them get 4680 batteries and others don't. The majority of customers may not care or realize about the batteries, but I would say they will care about improved range, performance, and charging speeds. There is value in 4680 batteries. There is nothing wrong with Tesla charging extra for them, and all the orders they have now were for when there was only 2170 batteries, but perhaps the older orders will get priority on getting some of the first ever 4680 Teslas, which too is also worth paying for. But wow, can you imagine if Tesla increased the Model Y price a further $5,000 on a product that may also save even more than that again on the cost of production, a vastly improved product that costs less to produce. That is what technology does. Except usually there is also competition, or at least enough supply to cater to the total addressable market. This would in turn reduce prices to the consumer. However, Tesla nor the EV competition currently can come close to serving the entire market. Therefore, Tesla simply gets to raise the prices and reduce the costs and thus massively increase profit margins. Tesla can then save more and more capital for future growth when the time is right. When Tesla needs to go more mass market or actually do finally have competition, competition being BEV manufacturers that can manufacture volume production at a net profit, then Tesla may actually reduce the prices of their vehicles. But by this stage, with all this massive capital invested, Tesla will start becoming more of a software company, as in more of the profits are derived from software, namely FSD, and it would appear the FSD cost will continue to increase. Not only that, so will the subscription model, which by the way, is a huge deal, as the majority of the profit of Tesla vehicles will eventually come from FSD related products perhaps in the vicinity of $100,000 over the lifetime of the vehicle. There would be so much profit there that Tesla could very easily afford to sell the vehicles at cost if they so wished, which would then incapacitate any other competition. Tesla make EVs at a lower cost than everyone else. Just because some EVs choose to undercut Tesla on price doesn't mean that they're doing anything better than Tesla. They are simply choosing to lose more money faster, or at least that is entirely the only thing these competitors have proven to do. These competitors are building market share in the hope of battery prices reducing before they run out of capital. This could be a big extra competitive advantage that Tesla will have, being able to charge so much faster than all the competition. Of course, there being so many more Tesla charging stations around more than everyone else too. Imagine owning an ICE car that whenever you filled up, the gas came out at half the speed. You wouldn't want to pay as much for that car. Well, this is the opposite. The entire 4680 setup will just make specifications that much harder to catch up for the other EV players. They may catch up to where Tesla was with the 2170 batteries five years ago, but probably not for a few more years still. And we are just talking about range and performance from EVs, not the entire computer or robot on wheels technology. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.